Hi, my name is David Yang, and I'm here with Carolyn Zelenitz, Zelenitz. Who, <laughs> who was a former student and then a fellow, and is now a software engineer at Google. So uh, we're really excited to catch up with you, and thanks for coming in. Um, I'm sure you must be busy being there. So, I, you know, the first question I always love to ask is, how did it all get started for you? So do you remember the moment you wanted to be, you know, actually, let's, let's go back a little bit, because you were, you know, you studied structural engineering in college. Do you remember the moment you knew that that's what you wanted to do? Uh, yeah. So I, <laughs> I was always really into math as a kid, um, took a bunch of math classes, um, and, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I didn't want to... <laughs> um, major in mathematics because I really didn't want to be a math teacher and of course I was really close-minded and had no clue what else to do with math <laughs> but um, so we were like on a college tour with us with my mom and we walked past an engineering building and I was like oh engineering and then I started like looking at the different fields in engineering and um, I really liked physics and um, you know uh, s uh, structural engineering was like a good balance of like math and physics and so I was like yeah that's for me and then I went into freshman year and I was like for sure gonna be a structural engineer and kind of like didn't really explore anything else. Wow that's really cool so you're just walking on campus you saw the engineering building and then what about structural engineering I mean the physics and the math was it did you like have a dream about being an architect or? So originally I did like the idea of I when I first went to Lehigh I was in um, like a five-year program, which was like architecture, uh, like a double major in architecture and structural engineering, because I like the, like one of the big things w for me about structural engineering was I really liked building, um, like the idea of like creating something, mm -hmm. um, and uh, like a Zelenitz towers. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. So yeah. So and I liked like des like okay. the idea of the design, but like within the first month, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be an architect. Um, so I dropped that and just stuck with the... Structural part. engineering. Yeah. And then, I'm sure in the structural engineering program, you were exposed to some programming, right? Like MATLAB or... Yeah, we, well, we had one C++ course, but like, that was freshman year, and I was like, I'm not gonna like this at all. <laughs> so I just like, I don't know, I didn't really like... You, you had that yeah. supposition going into the class that you yeah. weren't gonna like it. Yeah, so like, I'm like a very like, like all or nothing person like I did horribly in all the classes that weren't like structural engineering well, not okay. horribly but like I just like can't it didn't apply myself in those as if I knew I wasn't gonna like it so I kind of like put it off and then um, but like in my masters we did a lot of like I did like a dynamics course um, okay. and that involves a lot of MATLAB programming um, and then I realized that like that was pretty fun um, but yeah. So I always feel like in programming there are a few things that you're able to do or that you, that you do and you're like this is actually really cool and I'm starting to, to get it. Do you, do you have a moment like that when you were maybe in your MATLAB class or? Well so like taking the MATLAB co course was like well the course that involved MATLAB was like I mean I still went on to be a structural engineer so it's kind of like um, so like I, I was working for a while and I just like wasn't like didn't like see myself being a structural engineer I mean I, I think it's a great field and everyone's awesome but um, I don't know I was so I started doing a course on the side because mm -hmm. I um, was like oh like the MATLAB was fun maybe I should try some programming and I kind of uh, so I was just like doing this online course and one of the like most gratifying things was just like compiling it and like <laughs> and it building because in structural engineering you like they're so long before you know something works or like, and it's never like, yeah, that's correct. It's like, oh, like, I think that should be enough rebar. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, it's so kind so of. So there's no like build and compile. Because, like, you know, I was reading your application recently and you were talking about structural engineering and it's so, so many parallels to software engineering. You were talking about code review, you're talking mm -hmm. about the design and build process, and you're talking about, but there is no sense of, like I've, I put this all together and you can't like run a program that will tell you like okay this building will stay up or anything or? Uh, I mean you like can but it's not quite as like clear-cut as like you your build is like 
failed or built okay. some seeds. It's like, I don't know, like there's always like, that's why there's factors of safety when you're building a, something. It's like, it's not as clear cut. But it's also, yeah, there's like, so there are a lot of parallels and there's like a lot of, you know, in structural engineering, you, you mix with all these different people and it's a lot of like, it's the same like kind of team oriented like work and it's, it is similar, but it's, it's like something that you're, you're also building something that you never use. Like I'm, like all these buildings were like really expensive, luxury, mm. like high rises or like. But maybe someday. Uh, yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> these are like, like crazy. Um, Can you tell us any buildings that you worked on or? Um, I did a lot of uh, shop drawings for. Um, 45 East 22nd Street, which is like, okay. a, it's a really big new Oh, this building. new? It goes like this, and then up, and then out. It, like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, so very cool. Was, I worked for a while on that one. Um, but, yeah, so it kind of felt like you're only making something for like a very small percentage of people, whereas like in software engineering, you can make something for yourself, you can make something for anyone else, and it's like, you don't need like millions of dollars to go build a building. To start like, something, you don't yeah. Just like build buildings on the side. Like, <laughs> like you can just like open your computer and start writing like a program that like might be useful to you. Yeah. I, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious, you, um, you know, you have, you had a, a burgeoning or starting career as a structural engineer, and you invested five years into this in your life. What, was there a moment that you were like, I'm going to try, like, what made you take the leap to say, I'm going to try something else and do this? I mean, uh, I well, always view that as very courageous and I'm yeah. so kind of a... I've always been, like, somewhat of a workaholic, I would say. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like... I don't, I don't I want to I dig into that later because I, I, you are, like, an incredible work. <laughs> you work. spend so much yeah. of your life working. And that's, like, something, you know, if you don't, I've always enjoyed working as, but if it was, like, that point where I was, like, I don't think I'm enjoying what I'm doing anymore. And it was kind of like, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of like, you know, I was like counting down the hours of the day and it's like, but the, you spend too are. much time at work to like, to not be happy with what you're doing. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. So it was like. And you were doing this, uh, you were doing uh, EDX yeah. Harvard 50, right? Yeah, so I was like, you know, I'm young. If I'm going to make a drastic change, um, like, now's the time. And I talked to Colin. We'll okay. And he, because we didn't really know about the boot camps. Um, also, we, like, Pat and I were just, like, kind of broke. So we're, <laughs> like, we can't really afford to just quit our jobs and go to a boot camp. So we are going to, like, try and work, do it on our own for a while. But then after, like, speaking to Colin, we realized, like, this could really make things happen. Um, so I remember calling my mom and be like, tell me if you think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you have a job with benefits and you make money. And then I remember she like called me back later and she's like, uh, I don't think you're that crazy actually. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like you leave on a good note. You, the worst that could happen is I o could always go back to structural engineering, just like maybe with a better skill set. So I don't know. Oh, that's. Oh, I'm very touched by that because I always, you know, I know it's a big, um, that was a big jump. I'm curious, so you, you and Patrick, who is your, as of filming, your <laughs> boyfriend, boyfriend yeah. okay, your boyfriend, um, you both did it at the same time. And so what was he, he was also at the same structural engineering firm or he was also a structural engineer, but somewhere else? Yeah, he worked at a different firm, but. Okay. And you were, you were dating and you were like, let's, if we're going to be crazy, let's be crazy together. Is that how it kind of. Well, yeah, so we had been doing like the online course together um, and we'd been working and like helping each other. So it's kind of like if we're both going to do this, um, like why not? It's best to do it at the same time so we can both help each other and then we don't have to worry about like we can both work long hours and we're both like at the same goal. And so it worked out well. OK, that was really cool. I, we see that very rarely where it's like two people in a relationship do it at the same time because it's like usually one person says, oh i'll work and then i'll do it and then vice versa but um it's great to have both of you at the same time and working together um so you know i want to ask you some of the things about f your experience at full stack um well, do you remember what were some of the most difficult or challenging things about doing a like a, a boot camp program um i definitely had a lot of trouble when i started because i am like I 
kind of just am always really hard on myself at first and I always kind of think that right away that I'm like failing mm -hmm. and I think because I put so much in <laughs> into this like put all my eggs in one basket here by kind of quitting my job and I just like wanted to be really good <laughs> yeah but I was like so everything I did wrong was like was really stressful for me and I remember like the first day kind of, or like second day just like telling Pat that I sucked and I was never going to be good at this <laughs> and just like getting really stressed and I think kind of like the what first did Patrick say to you he was like <laughs> He knows that I'm always like really hard Talk, okay, he, okay, so he was supportive. And yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the beginning was hard just because like kind of like, I don't know, the balance of like, am I learning enough? Am I like... Learning like, the right know, things. Right. And, and, like, I'm curious, like, this is just personally, I, you know, I, me and my wife, we get along on a lot of things, but if we were ever put together doing the same thing i'm afraid that we'd be very competitive was there any aspect of that with you and patrick or no i don't think uh. so i think we were both pretty pretty supportive and we we worked together a lot so it wasn't ever i always also he he started did more programming than i did so okay. i don't think i i think i always was just like oh you have just more experience it's okay for him to be a little ahead of you yeah or? I, I don't okay. know. i'm pretty easy going so i'll tell you from our perspective we always thought we always have the same exact thing, like, Carolyn is going to be one of the strongest students in this class, but she's, like, way freaking herself out, you know, and so I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad everything worked out, but it was, uh, that was, a, that was our concern for you as well. <laughs> well, if you could do it over again, is there anything you would, any advice you would give to your 2015 self? Hmm, that's a tough question. Hmm. I don't know. I mean... It's not good to have any regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just like, yeah. Oh, you don't have to have an answer. I think. Yeah, I don't um, know. I don't know. It's hard to say. I, don't I I do want to ask you about your senior project because it's to this day. So when I think one project that I find one of the most ambitious and well executed, um, and I and recently I got an email from from your team that you have you got, you got, you're still maintaining it, updating it. Really? Okay. <laughs> we needed a new uh, domain, name domain name for it. Name, okay, yeah. that's still you know someone keeping it alive. Is it? Do my impression of it was that it was very impressive. Do you did you see that with other people you're talking to that they kind of get how cool this project was or? Yeah, I think I think people for the most if most part like felt like it was pretty cool. Do you think you'll ever continue on it or is it not? I think the code's probably pretty <laughs> shitty at this point. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it was a kind of a cool experience just because it was like learning a lot of different things pretty quickly. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say right now. I feel like I don't have any spare time. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to ask you about your, your life um, after full stack. Oh, you, know, so you also did the full stack fellowship. Um, I'm, you know, I'm curious, how did... Uh, like, what were some of the things that you most enjoyed about the fellowship? If you, um, I really enjoyed working with Ayana. Okay. <laughs> I thought she. Was she? She was an instructor when you were. Um. Or was she a fellow? Uh, she was. She was like the just an engineer. Okay, she, she was an engineer. That's so right. So she was like kind of. She like reviewed everything. She was like our mentor. I thought she really helped my code. Um, so I really enjoyed that and working on the team. I still use Agile, so. Okay. You know, Working in that environment, I guess it's good. Um, I think like having the ability to like teach sort of was also really useful because you know whenever someone asks a question and then and you didn't know it, you're like, oh well, I have to review this topic <laughs> now. <laughs> um, and also like the experience of like talking in front of people and mm -hmm. like you know like when we um, did the uh, whatever they call it. yeah the Are reacto problems yeah the reacto yeah. problems. I think that's like a good experience. I still want to like get more experience like talking, doing tech talks and stuff. But okay. Do you, are you pretty comfortable in front of crowds generally or? For the most part. If I'm comfortable with what I'm talking about, then I'm fine. If I don't feel like I know what I'm talking about, then it's less comfortable. So, you know, we, um, I, I'm curious, like, do you have advice for someone who's applying for a, like a coding boot camp? whose dream is to work at like one of the top companies like like Google, you know, um, what kind of advice would you give to them that, because 
Well, maybe I'll preface by saying that you put an incredible amount of work, I think, into the whole process of applying. What kind of advice would you um, give to someone about about that process? Um, yeah, I guess, like, well, a big thing was definitely, like, taking the course, online course beforehand and knowing that it was something that I really, really liked. Because I think jumping in, like, from one career to the next, like, being a little unsure of yourself is not not the best. Like, I had spent some time, um, and I was like, I really, really like this. Like, I want to be good at this. Um, so that was a big thing. So that, like, I think that's something I see differently um, than some of the people that majored in CS that I work with, because, you know, that's the only thing they ever did. Yeah. Um, so, like, they, they think, they, like, enjoy what they're doing, but, you know, there's always, like, that small, like, little piece of you it's like, is this like for sure what I want to be doing? But I feel like when you try something and you're like, kind of like you, you like make mistakes and then, so I think that was a big thing. Like definitely like coming in with like a big passion. Um, yeah, I'm curious because like, it's, it's so true. I, I see it all the time where um, that's how I feel about myself. I mean, I, don't, I didn't have reservations about it, but I do feel people who it's all they ever know, right. like being a programming. Um, and you're saying as, maybe it's just because you were more mature when you saw this. And you're like looking at this from, do I like this? Is there a good career? Um, is that, like, how did you know that this is something that took you over, like, that you really enjoyed this? Like, what was it that, um, uh, I was were you like coding all night or were you like yeah, looking well, for a lot of? I was of like doing the like problem sets for the course and I was like really enjoying it. I was like spending my weekends doing it. I even woke up before work my actual job at like five in the morning to work on them and then went to work and then sometimes I would work at the work like on them after work until like 11 so it was like <laughs> I was like totally okay to put in the hours on it I was like this is a job this that, is what I yeah okay. this is like a great thing for me and it was just like the mental challenge like the mental play yeah, of it okay yeah. oh, that's really and what about the um what about the study process like is it how much how much do you um because I think you were studying pretty aggressively do you think that you overstudy or do you think that was necessary to prepare or I mean I think that kind of varies from people from person to person like I for me to feel comfortable I have to like over be over prepared like for me to give a tech talk I have to spend like many hours on it like making sure it's like really good like I don't like to do like half-assed so I like to be over prepared but some people don't need that so it's like can I ask you a uh, just for myself personally you strike me as like one of the most disciplined people that I know. Like you're running marathons. I remember you ran a marathon, and then you came in the next day. No, you, you were drinking. You, we were out for drinks, and then you ran the marathon the next day, and then you were in on Monday morning, like before. What did it, do, do you have any like tools or tips and tricks? Do you meditate? Do you use Evernote? I mean, I don't know some like, tips and uh, tricks. <laughs> tips I think and tricks my for meditations, like running and swimming okay. and stuff. That's like when I, I like calm down I don't know it's like my time to myself okay I've always been better at sports that are just single like people. single people like you get to kind of <laughs> yeah it's just like my like I love swimming um it's like that's right are you ready getting ready for the triathlon are you uh, um, you and Patrick did a triathlon recently or something yeah we did one in the summer we're okay. gonna do a bunch next summer so okay it's just like it's like I don't know it's a fun balance I don't know I you need to like have other hobbies too I don't know okay um and you're, are you an early morning riser? Are you doing like this? I feel like there's this new fad of like people getting up at 4 a.m. kind of thing. Is that? Um, I, no. <laughs> um, I used to get up super early when I was a structural engineer and like attempt to go to, and went to the gym beforehand. I do am a morning person, but I get to work at like 10.30 now. 10 okay. or 10.30 after going to the gym. Okay, so the, okay. So t tell us a little bit about working at Google. Whatever you feel comfortable sharing, I know they're very... <laughs> Um, sometimes they, you know, like, what is it, do, can you even share what you're working on? Is it, um... Um, I think so. I'm on the Zagat team right now. Okay. So, yeah, so I am, like, went through a different process because I'm an engineering resident right now. Okay. Um, which at first was, like, you know, like, a, I think I just wanted to, like, be, like, a normal, just, like, go straight into it. But I'm, like, so happy it turned out this way. So I started, and it's like an eight-week um, kind of like boot camp, but not really. It's So you start with a cohort of 30 people, okay. mostly new grads. Um, 
from CS. And um, it's more like a ramp up period. Like you, you do some projects, but you learn like all the Google tools. Um, you know. Uh, okay, so because uh, I've, I've, uh, my understanding is that Google has its own training program for most all new hires because they're so complex to be a. Uh, yeah, so they, I think they have a training program, but then this is like a different one. Okay. Um, yeah, and then you do two rotations. So it's pretty cool because you get to also test out the different teams. Oh, that is awesome. Um, which I like. So this so is, you're on your second rotation now? First rotation. Yeah, so your first the, rotation. The okay. rotations are like four and a half months each. Okay. Um, and then you're supposed to be converted to a normal full time employee after. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I'm a full-time employee. Like I get benefits, and I'm I see. considered a full-time employee. But you're like, a f like you kind of get put into a team more permanently, kind of. Uh, yeah, um, but it's awesome because now I have like a, a cohort of people. Because Google's a huge company, yeah. so it's if you just went in without knowing anyone, you kind of like it's your. Teams you know your are team, really, your right? Teams are, but your team is really small. Like they, my direct team is like, I don't know, like maybe ten people. I don't know. I always. Yeah don't count and then I answer this question I've never that many. <laughs> um, but so it's like you wouldn't really know that many people but now I have like 30 other people I can always message to go to lunch with and you yeah know, throughout the day if I have questions so it's kind of like I think um, companies that do this it's really smart because two three years on the road when you're looking for your next team to work on you have people who are better throughout the company right not just yeah not yeah. just your one team that you know it's cool because now I run into people all the time and I also like other people are working, I can like talk to them about what they're working on, and so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, working at Google is really, really awesome. Um, they definitely like have a great environment. They do like a lot of courses, like I mm. took um, an Angular 2 course. I took like, spent two days on, in the Angular 2 course there, and um, they have like a bunch of courses I could definitely want to like, take. And so just well, what are the that's really cool. I, I love people who use the who talk about Google and like the benefits is the education. Everyone's always like free food, free food, which I'm sure is also great. Um, have you? I'm sure you wouldn't, but have you like people say gaining the, the Google, their Google 15 from just no. overindulging? No. Okay. I, I eat really healthily there because they have all these like things that would normally be extremely expensive, like eating quinoa and sweet potatoes and like all this like really good. Food like vegetables every day and I used to just eat like cheese so okay <laughs> I'm envisioning like a like kind of a dig in extraordinaire kind of yeah similar yeah um all right that's really cool the do you already have your next rotation set up um not You've quite but kind of uh so uh, okay still in, in the air um well Carolyn, I want to say thank you so much uh, one question I always love to ask mm -hmm. is what was your favorite memory of your time at full stack hmm Hmm. I don't know. Had a bunch of good memories. <laughs> you can share a bunch. You don't have to share just oh, one. Oh, I don't. I'm not good at these things. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I just. Oh. Oh. I guess it wasn't like in the building, but it was with the cohort. We went to um, after uh, hiring day or like yeah one of the things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we went to um, Boots and Saddles, which is like a drag uh, club uh, okay. bar, uh, and we sang karaoke, and it was it was great, great. Okay. Moment. I think okay. that was probably the funniest. Pat had to take a shot with the drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool. Well, thanks so much for coming in, and you know, congratulations on your success. I um, you know, I'm, we're, we're very proud of you, and uh, and yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah,